All right, we are just clicking everything on. Getting ready to go, so a little bit more to set up tonight. Because we have uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram tonight. So first time adding Instagram into the mix and hold on I gotta grab another battery guys bear with me we're having technical difficulty there we go all right so as you guys jump in let us know you are here looks like we've got uh couple on Instagram so Freddie you're joining on Instagram tonight looks like we're connected on Facebook YouTube is still connecting and waiting for chat to come up so hopefully uh, get going tonight and get all this working so not sure if people upstairs but okay so for those of you tonight on Instagram, welcome, welcome. Like I said, this is the first time that we have streamed using Instagram. Mountain Tough, hello. Scott's Thoughts, hello. John Tim, how you doing? So we're getting people, nice shirt. We are like twins right now. Wife is making fun. Excellent. So Freddie, I guess that means that you are wearing the Game Changer shirt also. So I'm not really sure why uh, chat's not wanting to get going tonight. Oh, I know, because my wife is on her computer working. Okay, looks like chat is up and going. So if you guys are with us from YouTube, go ahead and chime in, let us know that uh, you're here so okay so tonight um, you guys asked for kind of this discussion we're gonna talk about um, elk calling and how to adjust your elk calling in the woods when there's wolves around so I know well, you know wolves are becoming more and more prevalent in Washington and Oregon so um, we've had them in Idaho and Montana and Wyoming for a while. So there definitely is a change. There's, there's definitely, you, you, you have to certainly change your approach. So, all right, Lori, hello, Scott's thoughts, YouTube here in Alberta, Gentry. I will be on in a little bit. I'm getting things for school, but yet he just commented, Tristan, hello, hello. Uh, 6 a.m. outdoors, Marcus, hey. So, Robert Martin, hello. Jay Colley, hello. Okay, so a couple announcements real quick. So, I received the um, small batch of Marcos. They actually are in the Facebook store. They are live. There's only 19 of them. Those of you that have got Marcos before, if you pick up another one, we did change the color scheme a little bit. So, if you get it, color scheme will be um, just a little bit different so but they are the same old Marco so Marcos are in also the giveaway uh, from a couple of weeks ago for Facebook and YouTube I never heard back from the winners but one of them's here tonight actually Scott's thoughts you were one of the winners drawn for that uh, call pack two weeks ago um, I had asked for you to send me an email at, at uh, michael at elkcallingacademy.com with your shipping address and also your um, shirt size so I can get that pack out to you. So uh, Facebook, I have not heard from the winner drawn. So all of you that are on Facebook tonight that are tuning in, comment below this video in the comment section pick me and after we're done tonight i'll go in throw everybody into a hat and draw one winner from the facebook group 
to replace the other one. Scott, when can we order the new hat? Okay, we got a shipping date. It is January 10th, so um, soon. We'll get everything all set up and ready to go. I just don't have any pictures or anything of that to take of them yet, but we may do some pre-orders. Okay, let's jump into this. So calling elk in 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 wolves in in, in area in wolf country um it definitely does change the elk's behavior it also changed their vocalizations but that doesn't mean that you can't be effective calling in elk in wolf country what it does mean though is you need to change your approach to calling and you guys have heard me talk about this before where I've said, match your surroundings. And the biggest thing that you're going to notice is when elk are in the area, or when, sorry, when wolves are in the area, um, what you really need to do is you need to change a lot of things. First off, your volume. Your volume is critical. So the last thing you want to do is go into um, these wolf areas with the same approach. You don't want volume. So now with the diaphragm reads, just because diaphragm reads, just because you can get a lot of volume on them, you can cover a lot of country, doesn't mean you have to. And in fact, that's the worst thing that you can do when hunting elk in wolf country. So, all right. Sorry guys, I gotta do this. Instagram tonight, first time live. Uh, Perpetual Wander, welcome. PDX, pick me, Jared, welcome. So awesome that you guys are tuning in. So like I said, we've done this for quite a while, streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. Now with new software that allows me to go to both of those, we can add Instagram in. So, okay. So one thing I'm talking about here is when you're trying to locate and it's gonna change your approach. So typically in non-wolf areas, you know, your location bugle, you know, you're going to get that volume because you really want to reach out there and cover ground. The only difference is in wolf country, I can guarantee it. If you've hunted where wolves are and you throw off a loud bugle like that, the only thing you're going to hear back is a pack of wolves that start howling and kind of getting excited a little bit. When you're trying to locate elk in wolf country, the one thing that you need to do, like I said, is really back off your volume. The other thing too is the elk can still be pretty vocal, but they're going to be in heavily timbered areas. And so that's where you need to go because in those heavily timbered areas, that heavy thick timber is really going to knock the sound down. It's not going to carry as much as if you are out in open areas. So the, the other thing is, and, and I think this is one thing that a lot of people struggle with is kind of the low verbal calling or the non-vocal type calling. And what I mean by that is your raking, your huffs, grunts, and whines, uh, your chuckles. So these are all things that don't carry because in the bugle, it's that high, high note that really carries out. So when you're in wolf country, you want to focus more on these lower note tones, you know, the huffs, the grunts, the raking, um, you know, chuckling, because they're just not going to carry out as far. And that's how, the, that's how the elk are really vocalizing as well. You'll also notice, too, that the cows are not as loud. You know, their mews are, are a lot softer, and so you're going to want to take your diaphragm. and get softer on it. Now, because you are turning the volume down on your calling and it's not reaching out as far, that means you're going to stop and locate more frequently. You're gonna call a lot more often than what you normally would because your calls aren't carrying as much. Um, now, when you're locating, I mean, obviously you're focusing on the location bugles, you're focusing on some cow sounds to you know, get that bull to chime off. But what you're going to find a lot of times is 
especially if you're moving through the woods. If, if you're moving from one location to the next or you're just trying to, you know, hear a bull and you're listening, um, one thing that you might hear is just out of the blue, you might hear a bull just do this little growl like that. Basically, he's asking you to identify yourself because he doesn't know, especially in wolf country, he doesn't know if you're another elk, if you're a bear, if you're a wolf, you know, if you're a predator, you know, what you are. So he's going to give you that sound and he's only going to give you a short window to respond. And if you don't respond, he's gone because in his mind, you're a predator. He gave you an elk sound asking you to acknowledge yourself or identify yourself that other elk would know about. And you didn't respond. So he's he's not going to stick around. So especially with wolves hunting in packs, how aggressive they are. So um, that's another thing that you can do as well, too. So, you know, match your surroundings. Think like an elk. Act like an elk. So if you hear, if you hear a twig snap or movement, you know, just that little growl where other places that don't have to deal with wolves we hear something moving through the brush or we hear a twig snap, we may give a cow sound or, you know, a bugle saying, Hey, you know, what are you? Um, but do these lower, softer notes and vocalizations that aren't going to, you know, carry as far. I mean, yeah, it's, it's cool to, to get into bugle fest with a bull, but the thing that I've noticed with a lot of these elk, like I said, especially in areas that there are prevalent packs running around, the responses that you may getting get back are, you know, a lot of times it's raking or, uh, you know, soft chuckles. So, and that's where, um, that's where, you know, matching your surroundings and, and acting like an elk and knowing what's going on, paying attention to everything around you and matching that going on. That's what is going to contribute to your success. I mean, you can still get in a really cool sequence where you're working a bull that is, you know, you're raking your huffs and grunts and whines, uh, you know, doing some soft chuckles. He's responding the same thing. You can still get high intensity type encounters, but it's just not quite what you're used to. It's not quite that high pitch screaming match. And especially for you guys in Washington and Oregon, as the, as, as the wolf population rises, you're going to see elk in their behavior evolve. I mean, you know, we've, we've dealt with it here in Idaho for a while and, you know, quite a few generations of, of elk have grown up living with wolves. So they've kind of adapted what they do. Um, so if you really, really want to increase your opportunities or your call-ins, you have to adjust what you've been doing. So, all right. So that's kind of the first little bit. Uh, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and throw them in. Same thing. If you guys are on Instagram, feel free to type questions in. That's one thing for you guys joining us for the first time on this uh, Wapiti Wednesday live Q&A, um, you know, we we start with a topic and as we go, we answer uh, questions uh, from everybody and also some of the some of the questions that I don't get to turn into the topics for next week. So while questions are kind of rolling in, I've got to brag a little bit on Charles. Charles is a current Elk Calling Academy student. Tonight was supposed to be his fourth lesson. Um, I got a phone call from him um, today. And, and I mean, right from the get-go, his voice was was real shaky. Um, last week or two weeks ago with him, we kind of talked about uh, calling sequences and what to do out in the field. And dang it, if he didn't go out this morning, here we are, December 12th. He went out this morning, applied what he had learned, and within 20 minutes of doing this had a four by five Roosevelt bull come trotting in and stop 20 yards broadside. And he just harvested his first bull with a bow. So I am just so ecstatic for him and just want to say congrats, Charles. So 
Okay, uh, watching on YouTube, also from the TV, but I'll comment from here. David Perfect. Okay, Jay Colley. So if they are doing soft chuckles, do I need to match it? Yes. Whatever you're hearing, you want to match that. That's and and it just it doesn't necessarily have to be the soft chuckles that you're matching, but it's that that tone level. It's it's how much volume does he have? That's what you're matching right there. Because the elk are going to also let you know if they have, if there's a pack of wolves in the area or maybe they're two canyons over. If they're two canyons over, if elk aren't in that or, or if wolves aren't in that immediate area, they're still going to fire up. They're going to rip bugles. They're still going to rut. They're still going to do all that stuff. But if there are wolves in the area, one of two things is going to happen. Either one, they're going to get in that thick timber. They're going to crank their volume down. Or two, they're just going to rotate out. And that's one thing that we noticed a lot here in Idaho with some of the places that we hunt is, you know, these elk are sometimes on a three, four, or five-day rotation. Uh, you know, those days of the past of, of them going to that same bedding area, and, and you know it's a bedding area because as soon as you walk in there, it just reeks. I mean, it smells like elk so strong. Not so much anymore. They have they have several different bedding areas. Like I said, they'll be on that three, four, or five day rotation to where they'll have different bedding areas. They'll have different feeding areas, and they'll just continue to, you know, do that cycle to kind of stay in front of the wolves and and stay away from them. So, all right, uh, Justin from Facebook. It's taken some adjustments here in Washington with the wolves getting a hold in the area. Yeah, and that's that's one thing. Like I said, with you guys in Washington and Oregon, you are just starting to experience what we have been dealing with for quite a few years in Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. So, um, you know, we definitely saw a huge decline in the elk numbers because, I mean, the up up until they were released, the elk had never seen a wolf. They had never. They didn't know. They didn't. You know, they, they recognized it as a predator, but still the habits and the tenacity, they had no clue. So now we've had the opportunity for, like I said, a few generations. So you guys are just kind of on that swing where it's going to take a little bit for them to evolve. So, okay, Colton Meyer started seeing that change this year, especially wolves were present, elk were quiet. And that's the thing, too, is... It's, it's not so much that they were quiet, it's they were a lot softer. And, and what you're going to have to find is some of these, you're going to have to be sometimes within 100 yards of these elk to even hear them. It's not the days where you're going to hear them from five, six, seven hundred 700 yards out, um, especially in these new areas. You are going to have to be close. I remember years past where we really had to locate call in you know bugle or cow call whatever we were doing to locate a lot more frequently and sometimes I mean we would not get a response until we were right on top of those elk so that's why we talk about turning the volume down call more often so okay Raymond Clark Jr. from Facebook is it similar with bears country as wolf kind of more so, Raymond. I mean, wolves, uh, you know, can be a lot more aggressive on the pack. So they can do a lot more hurt on a pack of wolves than what bears can. So David Crane from Facebook. Congratulations, Charles. So cool. And a bull. So cool. That is awesome. Michael Hamilton, you're late, but welcome. Freddie, so you jump from Instagram over to Facebook. I like it. So uh, David Crane from Facebook. The wolves are thinning them out for sure, and it sucks. It does, but <clears throat> if you really understand and think about the predator and prey dynamics and balance. So, you know, if you have an abundance of prey, you're going to have an explosion of the predator population. And then that, that scale is, is, is going to tip. It's going to change to where the prey side really falls and that predator side goes up. Well, then because of carrying capacity... There's not enough to support that prey. So a few things happen. Either they branch out and move out into new areas or 
mother nature comes in and diseases and, and then it kind of comes back into balance. But the predator prey balance is always doing this. It's always shifting. It's always going down, coming back up. Uh, we're in a trend right now where uh, elk populations are actually kind of bouncing back up. Some areas are obje above objective, um, some at objective, and we actually have some of the areas that were really decimated are just now coming up almost to objective. So, okay, we've got a comment on Instagram. I've hunted elk in early fall and bugling was great. When does bugling elk no longer work? You said Charles just called one in and harvested in December. So Michael, it, um, you know, pretty much once the rut really starts winding down, your bugle activity really tapers off. Now, what Michael was doing was basically a late season tactic that we teach at Elk Calling Academy, which is, um, you know, and I've, I've talked about this on, on past episodes. You guys are new, so I'll kind of cover it again tonight. So late season calling tactics, you can actually focus on cow sounds more. And really the, the tactic that Charles did was he got into an area where he found fresh sign, fresh tracks, fresh droppings. He could smell the elk from the fresh pea. And all he did was sit down you know, three or four soft cow calls. And then he waited four or five minutes and then repeated that again. He was only sitting there for 20 minutes before this bull. And this bull actually bugled back to him before he came trotting in. So that was the coolest thing that he actually got a bull to, uh, you know, bugle back and respond before he, before he came in. So Michael, hope that answers your question. So the bugling, um, you know, kind of the post rut time, you can still bugle a little bit just to get location. But as far as your full blown challenge bugles and lip balls and, and full blown, you know, bugle fest, they kind of really start tapering down in that post rut time, which typically is the first part of August. Once you get past the, or, or sorry, October, once you get past the middle of October, now you're kind of out of that post rut time and you're more in that staging time where they're kind of staging before they move to their winter grounds. And that's where this um, little little cow calling routine is, is really, really effective. And we mix that cow calling routine in throughout the season. Okay, Michael, awesome, thank you. You are welcome. And Michael, thank you for being the uh, first one on Instagram to uh, throw out a question for Wapiti Wednesday Q&A. All right, let's see what else we got from Facebook. I usually throw a bugle ahead of a chuckle. Can give us an example of soft chuckle you're talking about. So yeah, it's it's you're still gonna do the same things that you do on your normal chuckles, just you're gonna turn that volume down. So it's definitely a lot softer. I mean, versus if you're in a non-wolf area, So, again, turn that volume down. And if you want to know, if you really want to play with it to test your volumes and know, go out in some of these areas and have your, have your hunting partner. You know, get 100 yards away from you. Get 150 yards out. Get 200 yards out and find out what kind of distance your calls and your volumes are going to. Then you kind of know how much air pressure and how much volume to put into the, all of these. So that way you immediately know how much to back off. So, all right, uh, from YouTube, Brian D. Howdy, YouTube Mountain Tough, have a good rest of your night, you too. So Facebook, Jay. So if I'm in a spot and hear wolves, but I have seen elk in there and can smell them, should I move out and find a new spot? Not necessarily. So they could still be there. Um, you know, your, your calling can still be effective. Really in that case, Jay, I would probably not, I, I wouldn't let out any bugles that hit high notes. So I would focus more on some of the softer cow calls, uh, the raking. You know, you can still kind of do some of the breeding sequence, Jay, um, but just stay on the 
lower note range of the breeding sequence. And I mean, if you are gonna do those huffs, grunts, and, and, and whines, you know, something just soft like that. So, um, but as far as your full blown high volume rip bugles, no way, stay away from it. So, all right, uh, let's see, Facebook, Jimmy, every hunter that harvested an elk or deer should also harvest a wolf, bear, or mountain lion. We owe to the elk herds. Absolutely, we have to control our predator and manage our predator numbers just the same exact way as we do our game animals. Jonathan, how you doing, buddy? Hey, welcome to Instagram, bud. So, okay, from YouTube, Michael Hamilton, loved your update about Charles filling his late archery tag here in Washington. Were you surprised to find out he called it in this time of year? No, um, because he was actually out a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he actually called in three cows and a big seven by seven bull. Um, but he just got a little impatient and he actually moved trying to, uh, you know, get a clear shot on that big seven by seven and they kind of caught his movement and busted out. So, so no, I'm, I'm not surprised that, that, you know, he was able to call an elk. I mean, you know, that's, that's the thing with that cow routine guys. It works from, uh, early season all the way through late season. Uh, you know, I've said it before, if you want to just harvest an elk every year, just go out, find fresh sign and do that cow routine. So it's more tailored towards the younger bulls and the cows. Um, it's, it's not going to call in too many mature bulls, um, but it definitely will call in elk. So Instagram, Kootenai Cook, welcome, hello. All right, let's see what else we got. Jerry Dixon, when taking care of the meat in wolf country, do you handle it like bear country? How, how aggressive will the wolves be after the kill? You know, one thing is, you know, we don't really rush to get the meat off the mountain. Um, I mean, typically, you know, we're in groups of three, so we can take a whole elk out in one trip. But if you do have to leave some behind, not to worry about it. Usually we'll leave a shirt or a jacket, something with a human smell on it. Um, you know, we'll urinate around where we put the meat, just something that's going to leave that human scent. Cause we know we're going to be back the next day. We know we're going to be within a 24 hour window. So leave something behind that has some sort of human scent on it. And as long as that human scent is there, because these predators, they're going to, you know, they find this stuff with their nose. So if they're looping downwind of that meat and you've got something that has human scent to it, they're not going to come in, especially if you if you're hunting in areas like Idaho, Washington or Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, places where the wolves have been hunted, where they've been shot at, they associate that human smell with danger. Um, I mean, same thing, Washington and Oregon, because a lot of the wolves that you guys are getting are some of these that are migrating over from Idaho. So they've been shot at. They've had interactions with people. So um you know, they are uh, definitely going to stay away from that. So, so now you, you, you don't really have to be too hard pressed about it, Jerry. You, you have a little bit of time. So, okay, Facebook, David Crane. So we have foot rot and wolves here in Washington. When do you think Washington will start selling wolf tags? Unfortunately, David, I don't have an answer to that. Um, I mean, because really when the wolf management plan was put into place, it was really put into place for the three states where the wolves were uh, released. They had to get to a certain number with so many breeding pairs and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I've heard a few things back and forth about Washington and Oregon. Uh, there has been talk about, um, you know, starting to allow wolf hunts, um, but I haven't heard any, any definite when they will. So it all depends on the, on the legislation. So just in the state will never, in my honest opinion, you know, it's hard to, hard to say there's, there's actually some other things that are coming. Um, we'll, we'll just, we'll just see, let's just, let's just put it that. So, all right, David Crane, do you bugle late season? 
I, I will sometimes, um, like I said, because, you know, a location bugle is a, a bugle that w bulls will do all year round. It's just their way of staying in contact with each other. So, um, so yeah, you can certainly go out and you can still bugle late season. You're not going to get real aggressive. You're not going to um, get those huge screaming matches like you do during the peak of the rut or maybe sometimes during um, pre-rut when those bulls are establishing their pecking order. But you could most certainly get a bull to crack off. The other thing that I kind of hesitate about, usually late season, um, if it's a rifle hunt, I tend to just stay with cow calls. Uh, I will not bugle very much at all. If it's a late season archery hunt, it depends on the time of year. Uh, but usually late season, I focus more on the cow sounds. So, all right, Jay Colley, thank you, boss. You bet, bud. Okay, Travis O'Shea, exactly what we do in Alberta. Lots of quiet chuckles. Uh-oh, Travis O'Shea, the man, the myth, the legend has uh, joined us. The, the mastermind behind making the uh, Marcos. So... All right, Bill Flagg. Thanks, Michael. I plan on working on improving my control of my chuckles in the off season, but that change of volume adds total realism. Man, I need lessons. <laughs> Bill, anytime. So schedule is uh, pretty open. I've got a couple of students that are just finishing up and a couple of others that are just starting. So just send me a message anytime. David Crane, can you go over this cow routine? Do you bugle in the late season? And if you do, what call? So that, that cow routine is just exactly what I did before. It's, it's just two, three, or four soft cow calls. And then you just wait four or five minutes, and then you repeat that same thing. The important thing about the cow routine, because your cow sounds don't travel as far as bugles, obviously, you have to do this and you have to set up in areas that you have fresh sign, that you know there are elk in the area. Um, the, the tricky thing with this though is you don't know what direction they're gonna come from. So you basically have to be on your toes, you have to be ready. Because they're not necessarily going to make a bunch of noise. Yeah, the bull this morning bugled for, for Charles. But, I mean, I've had them in September during the rut where they didn't even make a sound. The only sound I heard was a twig snap. So really, really be attentive of what's going on around you. So, all right, uh, from Facebook, Josh, I know the bull's up here in British Columbia. The bull shut up right after first light because we have a bad wolf problem up here. How do I keep that bull going so he doesn't go quiet? Okay, this is one thing that I hear a lot is that the bulls go quiet. Um, but do they really go quiet? Or is it that they've, they've gone from their feeding areas, which are typically a little more open, into that heavy timber to bed down, and they change kind of the type of, uh, type of sounds that they're doing, or that timber is really knocking down the sounds and you're just not hearing it from as far. So... That's really the question. And, and it could be that, you know, the other thing to remember is as, as elk are moving towards their bedding area, once they start getting close, they kind of shut those calls off anyways, and they go the last little bit quiet um, because they, they don't really want to broadcast exactly where they're bedding down. So you have kind of that general idea. But I bet if you kind of followed them and got close, now, mind you, too, that first little bit, they're going in, they're bedding down, they're quiet. Well, you know, they're sleeping. They're sleeping for a little bit or they're sitting there working on the contents of the stomach. So there's not a lot of vocalizations anyways. And, and Josh, this is where a lot of people will go, oh, they're shutting up. We're done for the day. Let's, let's go back to camp until this evening when they get back up. But if you stayed right there by them, if, if you got on the same level or maybe a little bit higher, so that way with thermals blowing up and you were within 200 yards of them, I bet during the middle of the day, you're going to hear a little bit of elk vocalizations. It may not be a ton, but it could be a bull getting up and just letting off a soft bugle or, or, or something you know, to his cows or just kind of broadcasting that he's kind of on his feet a little bit. So... Give that a shot. See if that kind of changes. So, all right, Scott, congrats to ECA student. Charles, 
Brittany from Instagram, welcome. Okay, Bill, the wolves got the free range cattle worked up on my last hindquarter pack out at 2 a.m. I thought the big Angus bull was going to stomp me in the dust that night. Put the light in his eyes and talked to him, had the 45 out, and glad I didn't need to use it. Yeah, Bill, where you were, you've got that mix of, you know, the cattle, the wolves, you know, you got a lot of activity, especially um, at night when the predators are even out a lot more. And, you know, the cattle were, since they're so on guard and used to being chased by the wolves, you, you know, with you coming out, they're really not sure what you are. You know, they hear walking, but they're not sure. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if kind of got uh, a little bit aggressive. So, David, thanks, Mike, on that because I went out last weekend and, man, had nothing going at all. I am a new bow hunter. Yeah, just, just go out and try that uh, try that cow routine. So, <laughs> Freddie, I'm sorry the wife's making fun of you. So, um, I'll, I'll, I'll stop wearing the uh, Game Changer shirt so that way we won't have to uh, twinsy very much. So, Benito, are you going to be bringing in any products to the Portland show? Reed shirts, hats. Uh, Benito, I'm not, because um, actually I'm heading to the Portland show for bendable products. Um, and in fact, if you guys have not gone to their website yet, uh, it's B-E-N-D hyphen A-B-L-E. So bendable. Uh, the um, grunt tube holders are now available. They actually have three sizes for them now. They have the large size that will fit the Phelps Unleashed tube. They have the middle size, which is, you know, kind of that extreme bully bull from Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls, uh, the antagonizer from Mile High Note. And then they also have a small one that fits the uh, little Phelps Unrivaled tube. So, all right. Uh, so, no, uh, I'm not bringing products down just because I'm primarily coming down. I am going to be spending most of my time in their booth. But I am also going to be jumping over to the Phelps booth for an hour or two during the day. Once we kind of get schedules figured out, I'll not I'll uh, release the schedule so you guys will know where I'm at. So you can you can definitely come by. So uh, Stephen Elliott, sorry guys, fashionably late. That's not a problem. Uh, Dave West got a bit late. I'm going to wait till you're done and start from the beginning. All right, David Crane. Okay, I'm planning an Idaho hunt, Idaho hunt for 2020 never hunted outside my state you busy in september for an elk hunt yeah unfortunately uh i don't know the the guys that i kind of hunt with they're they're kind of uh greedy i guess so now they're they're great guys so all right jeremy do you trim your calls at all i've been looking at the native carlton uh but seem a bit wide for my palate so jeremy yes i do and, and really the the thing with the native calls, it's not the frame that is wide. So, because um, really the frame itself either come half inch wide, five eighths inch wide, or three quarter inch wide. There's not a huge difference. But the thing with the natives is you have a lot more tape um, on the native by Carlton's than what you do on other reeds. So, but yes, you can get out scissors and you can trim that tape down. Now, here's a little trick for you guys that are trying the native reeds because of the call armor tape that they use. It's not as soft and pliable as the athletic tape type on all the other reeds. One thing that I really like to do on these is I'll put them in my hand and blow some hot air, hot air in there it makes that a lot more pliable. So then when you put it up in the roof of your mouth, it's gonna to mold to the roof of your mouth a lot better and you're gonna get a much better fit with those natives. So, but between trimming and heating that up a little bit, you should find that uh, it'll fit really, really well. So, all right, uh, Facebook Mike, what calls do you make to get a stubborn bull out of its bed? We had a cow come in, but the bull didn't, noontime. Mike, my number one go-to on that is the breeding sequence. So breeding sequence, the reason it is so effective is because that breeding sequence is geared towards mature bulls, the breeding age bulls. They recognize the sounds within that breeding sequence. They know what's going on when you're doing it and they want to come over, especially if they don't have a hot cow, they want to come over and verify that you have a hot cow because on the chance that maybe they're a more dominant bull than what you are, they can end up breeding that cow. So stubborn bulls breeding sequence and it's one of those things that a stubborn bull you can't 
force him to come. You can't speed up your routine or you can't, you know, do these things thinking, man, if I do this, I'm going to make him come. You have to have patience with a stubborn bull. And that's where the breeding sequence, doing it the right way, really working it through with the right pace, the right cadence, everything within that sequence to have that realism. That's the thing that's going to get that bull to come. But unfortunately, you can't force him to come in sooner. You have to stay within what you're doing. And basically, when he decides it's time to come, then he's going to go ahead and come. But the breeding sequence is my number one thing. So, all right. I'm not eligible, probably. Uh, Freddie, no. You, you can't throw the... Uh, pick me. So Jerry, thanks for your time again. You bet, bud. Uh, Jim, totally stuck in my kid's Christmas program and missing this. But you know what? You're supporting family and you can always come back and watch the replay on this. So family is important, um, you know, especially this time of year. Um, biggest thing is, is just take a moment, guys, and remember what the reason for the season is. So Okay, Justin, are your products only on sale at G4? So Justin, I assume that you are talking about the Game Changer, which the Game Changer is actually not my product. That is Freddie. In fact, he's, he's online tonight. Um, in fact, if you see GC calls commenting on the Facebook, that is Freddie. What you can actually do is go to uh, the Game Changer Facebook page or their website and see if... Uh, they're available there and um, ship out. I know Freddie and I, we've talked a few times of him, you know, actually selling them on his, on his website. Uh, Freddie, have you started selling those on your own website or are they still only on G4 website? So uh, we'll, Justin, we'll wait for Freddie to chime in on that. So David, Mike, does the live feed start at seven? I always miss the first bit. No, usually uh, I'm trying to start the, the live feed at 745. Uh, just because of Pacific time and plus with lessons, because uh, I run my lessons at 5.15 and 6.30. So that second lesson at 6.30, I get done with it at 7.30. That gives me about uh, 15 minutes to grab something to drink and get everything set up. So, so no, 7.45 is usually the time that we go live on this. All right, what else do we got? Some of you guys on uh, Instagram can certainly pipe in questions as well. So Benito, pick me, love it, David. Okay, I think that's 645 for me then. Yeah, if you're Pacific, it's 645. So okay, if you were saying seven, if you're jumping in at seven your time, yeah, you're 15 minutes behind. So okay, so kind of recap and come back a little bit with, you know, calling strategies within wolf country. Um, the, the biggest number one thing is is just your volume and focus more on kind of those lower notes, your, you know, your growls, your huffs and grunts, your whines, your glunking, your raking. You guys, I, I mean, I don't know why more people don't throw raking into their setups. It's such an effective sound. Um, I think you'd really, really be surprised if you really started adding a lot more raking into your calling setups. Um, the other thing with your setups is make sure that you're moving around. You're not just standing in the one place. So, all right, guys, last round of questions. So if you have any questions, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, get them in. So Friday's video, um, I've been working on a video for those, um, grunt tube holders from bendable products showing you guys how to attach them the different places you can attach them how they work kind of talking about all that also a couple of other ideas for those so that is going to be friday night's video um upcoming we've got some more black street guide gear videos coming um and kind of some other things with other other new partners so we are also moving forward on the website development, um, have found a couple of platforms and uh, we are moving forward with that. So 
It's probably not going to be right after the first of the year, probably be springtime before we launch the website. Um, but the way the website is going to work is you're going to have kind of some options. So it's going to be a subscription based that is going to get you into all of the lessons that I teach within the private lessons. So each of the chapters, everything that we teach, but you're going to have some choices. So there's going to be an annual membership. There's going to be a six month membership. And then also for maybe some of you guys that have been elk hunting for a while, but you only want to work on one thing. Maybe you only want to work on cow sounds. You're going to have the ability to go into individual chapters and basically do a one month subscription on those individual chapters. Now there is an advantage for the annual subscription guys, because I will do a weekly live uh, broadcast just for the annual members that then really like some of the things that I talk about on these that I really can't get into the depth on because of the lessons, you guys that are annual subscription members are going to get access to that weekly live stream. I don't know what day it's going to be yet. We'll kind of figure that as we go on. So, okay, let's check last round of questions. Okay, David, yes, I want one, Mike, you've given one away. Uh, David, are you talking about uh, the Game Changer or the Marcos? What are you talking about? So Jay, pick me, pick me, pick me. You only had to say it once, bud. Okay. So Martin, what does good raking sound like? You know, really, Martin, the, the, the way to think about raking is if, if, if you just imagine taking a stick and, and kind of dragging it on the side of the tree in the bark so it kind of has this cha -cha 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 -cha, cha -cha 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 -cha, this chatter you know that's kind of raking um the way that you can kind of get aggressive with that raking is taking that stick and banging it on the branch and then slamming it into the tree um you know maybe you turn and there's a short bush and you just rattle that so i mean there's there's a lot of different things and um i i wish the weather outside was a little bit a little bit better to you know really be able to do a, a good raking video but martin i'll put that on the list to to do a video of that matt marcos will be in when actually matt i just got in 19 marcos today they are on the facebook shop page and live right now so i imagine they're going to go pretty quick i probably won't bring any more in until springtime so this is just going to be it for for now so better act fast guys i don't think they're going to stick around so Okay, nothing on Instagram. Um, haven't seen anything from YouTube for a while. Did we lose our feed on YouTube? Nope, still shows online. So, all right, from Facebook, Josh Klein. Yeah, so I don't leave the area. Stay with them. Move when they do. Try to get a better location to hear them or see them. Uh, but our bulls up here give you a short first light window or evening hunt. Our bulls almost gone right to nocturnal because of the wolves. So what would be the best call to keep that bull interested? Okay, so, um, you know, Josh, what you can do is, so like I said, when, when they're heading to bed in the morning, once they kind of really get quiet, go ahead and just stop calling for a couple of hours, uh, you know, two, three hours, you know, because they're going to bed down, they're not going to do much. So that's your time to kind of lay down, take a nap, eat, drink, kind of, kind of replenish. So now let's say this is 10 o'clock and they bed down. So about 1230, you can kind of start going through this breeding sequence or the cow routine, whichever you choose. Um, and, and it's not so much that you're calling, interacting with this bull, especially on the breeding sequence, because the breeding sequence, you're going to go through it and you're going to do this routine. You're going to paint that picture and you just, the key thing is you have to focus on what you're doing. You have to focus on the rhythm that you're doing that picture. Cause that's basically what you're doing with this bull. You're, you're painting a picture in his head that you're a bull with a hot cow and you're tending this cow. You're waiting for her to uh, basically just give in for the breeding. So, with the breeding sequence for the first little while, you are actually not really interacting with a bull. 
But the more you go through this and the more you do this routine and the more you kind of build it up and, and you build up that excitement, the more interest he's going to show. Now, the critical thing with you, since you have this really, really bad wolf problem, is you're going to have to focus on your volume. You can't get too much volume because if you get too much volume, he's just going to get up and he's going to go out the back door and he's going to move away because he's afraid that you are going to call in a wolf. So that's where your rhythm, how long you wait, your volume, all these things come into play. So, but... That's what I would do is focus on that breeding sequence. All right, Instagram, I'm new to elk hunting. Do you see the difference in calling between Rosies and Rockies? So, Ducks fan, thanks for the question. Um, yes and no. The, the one thing with Rosies is because of the terrain that they live in where it's so much thicker, the call doesn't carry as far. Um, I mean... Rosies will get just as aggressive as, as Rockies will. You'll still have the same rutting activity, breeding activity, all that. But because of that thick, thick vegetation, it just knocks that sound down. So you're going to have to be a lot closer. So really the only thing that changes is, especially when you're locating, how often you locate. You're going to locate a lot more frequently uh, than you would in more open areas. So, but as far as the approach, the tactics and this and that, take the same approach, take the same tactics. So, uh, Jay Colley, price on it. The Marco is $899 with $350 for um, chipping. So, David Crane, the bugle holder. Um, I gave one away last week. And you never know, we might have some other giveaways coming up. So David, the answer to your question, am I giving away a bugle holder? Yes. Is it tonight? No, but stay tuned, maybe on another one. So, all right, Jimmy from Facebook, what are bulls normally doing when they're glunking, breeding, pushing cows around? So, okay, so what glunking is, is they're actually testing the air. So they're, 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 you know, scent checking that cow, you know, how much in estrus is she? Is she ready to breed? Where, you know, what level is she at? So basically that's what glunking is. But, but throughout the whole glunking breeding sequence, pushing cows around, what that bull is doing is, you know, you'll hear the glunking, he's checking the air, you'll see her, you, you know, you'll see him licking her backside. It, this is all scent checking and it's not so much really that he's pushing her around it's more like she's moving away from him trying to avoid because she's not receptive yet she's not open to that yet so that's why a lot of times you know you'll see it it looks like this this bull is just dogging this cow or pushing her around when in reality she's moving away from him and he's just he's he's dogging her he's right on her until that optimum time where he knows that she's ready to breed and she gives in so so that's everything that's kind of going so charles is it true colorado doesn't have a wolf problem um majority of the state no they don't have a wolf problem but you the thing with Colorado is you have kind of a couple of different areas. You know, you have, you know, wolves kind of crossing crossing the line from Wyoming. And then on the south side, you have the, the Mexican red wolf that's coming up out of New Mexico that's kind of getting on the southern end. But do they have a wolf problem per se? No, not that I have heard. So, uh, Jay, do you have prices on your all access? Yes annual subscription is going to be 30 cents a day so basically 109 bucks is what it's going to be basically which is right in line that if you booked four private lessons that's kind of what you're getting but now you're getting a full year's access to the videos and those weekly live streams bill flag boom marco ordered perfect okay Guys, we are knocking on the door of the hour mark, so we are going to wrap this up for tonight. I still do have a couple of questions from last week that uh, didn't get to, so I'm going to grab one of those, and that will be next week's topic. But 
Hopefully tonight this kind of answered some of your questions about calling, you know, elk calling strategies within wolf areas. So um, definitely appreciate all of you guys tuning in tonight. Thank you for everybody from Instagram that has popped in and out. Uh, this was kind of a first time with uh, bringing Instagram into the mix. So right now we're Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Appreciate all of you guys. Thank you for the support. Without all of you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this. As always, keep calling, keep practicing, but most importantly, guys, have fun while you're doing it. We will see you all next week on the next episode of Wapiti Wednesday Q&A brought to you by Elk Calling Academy. Have a great night, guys.